Now it's time to write the code for the update and delete. So what we have done till now is basically we have this products uh, page or the controller and we are sending a request to get all the products. We are getting that on the client side. It can be a browser or it can be a, a API client like Postman. And then we are also fetching one product details or we are able to add new products. And we have done that in Postman. So if I open my Postman, so this was the request, right? So we have sent the get request with using which we were getting the uh, products. We have also done with the post request. In the post, basically we are sending data as well. So what we'll do is uh, before we go for the update and delete, let me add this product and then we'll do that. And I can't do this now. So if I send a request, it says the server is not running. So to make sure the server is running. So I will just restart the application and hopefully this time there will not be an issue uh, because I'm recording after a long time. And if you see here, uh, it's running. It's running on port number 8090. If I go back to Postman, first of all, let's say get the products and this time it will show only three because see, we are not storing this data in the database. Every time you restart the application, uh, you will lose your data. So basically we have the hard-coded link list or we have the hard-coded list which is in the service. This is what we are returning, right? This products. Now I want to add a product. So if I click on the post which is having this data which is 104 and when I click on send, you can see we got 200, okay? But again, if I say get, it should be having four records and we have it. So now uh, let's try to update something. Let's say I want to update the price for the sure mic. I don't want the price to be 10,000. Let's say, let, let's make it 12,000. How do I do that? See, for the update, what we have to do is we have to change the type of the request. First of all, let me just have this data with me. I will just copy this. And next, I will change the type of method. So instead of saying get and post, we'll go for put. So put is used for the update. And I will go to the body and I want to say, I want to change this data. So this is the new data which I, which I have. Okay, so how do I make it work? If I click on send now, it will not work because we don't have any method which is accepting a put request. So you can see it says method not allowed. So how do we solve this? It is actually simple. What we can do is let's go back to the controller and here let's create a method for the put. So I will say public void, I don't want anything written or maybe we can simply return the data or we can avoid it. So I will say void, void, void. Okay, that was not intentional, but anyway. So I will say update uh, product and here, so when you say update, basically you are sending the data as well, right? So we have to accept the data in the product prod. It can be named, doesn't matter. And I want to use the request body annotation. We have used it for the post as well. Uh, this, this is responsible to get the data in the request and send that in this reference. So here, what we can do is we can say, hey service, uh, I got this request and I want you to update the product. Okay, so I'm doing that. And I will simply say prod here and that's done. But the thing is, we don't have this method in the service. So what I can do is I can just click here and say create a method update product and we got it this. The tricky part when it comes to doing this manually with the help of this list, it's tricky. See, in the normal world, we store this data in database. Now, because of a module called Spring Data JPA, it becomes very easy. So we'll see what exactly Spring Data JPA is in some time um, in the upcoming videos, but here we have to do some manual work. But uh, trust me, once we start with Spring Data JPA, we just have to change one line and it will work. Okay, but then here, uh, I'm not sure about the code. Let's try. So I will say products dot, uh, I don't want to add now, I just want to update. So do we have a method which will update this? Unfortunately, we don't have it. So we have to go in a manual process. So if I want to update a particular list, I will say get, can I set the value to, yeah. So basically this is what we want to do. We want to set the product on a particular ID, but I don't know the ID where to set this. Right? That's a tricky part. So the way you can get the ID is this. So you can run the loop. Maybe I'll just, I can use a normal loop here. I can just run the loop here from int zero to i less than products dot size i plus plus. I just want to get the ID, right? Or the index. So I will say int index. I want the index. Index will be originally zero. Um, but this is a problem here, right? So, okay, we'll talk about the problem in some time. Basically, I want to iterate and if I want to check if 
the products dot get i dot get product id is equal to prod dot get product id if this is matching i will set index to that particular i value right since for only has one thing we can just remove the curly brackets and i got the index and the product so basically what we have done is we are setting so when you say set it will, it will replace basically we are changing the data or the object with the new object which we got here so we have we are writing such a such a such, such a lengthy, lengthy code right if you have a better solution let me in the comments this is not the best solution but once you start with data jpa this will become easy okay uh, i know i'm getting suspense here but you will see that later and let me know if you have a better, better solution to update the product list okay will this work let's try first of all i want to map it also so i will say put mapping and here I will accept the request for products, the same uh, list or the same URL, but then with a different uh, method. And once we have done that, I will just refresh this. The problem is once, once I restart the application, we are losing that fourth uh, object because again, we have to add. So let's say we only have three records. And now if I go back to my Postman, let's send the get request first of all and see what are the data we have. So you can see we have this data and I want to change the, let's say this time, let's, let's change the second one. Okay. And let's change the price for this. And for this, I'll be sending a put request. You can see we have a put request for the same URL and the body, I want to change it with this. But then the, instead of saying Canon camera, I will say Canon only. Let's remove the camera and say send. Okay. It says unsupported media type. Okay, if I check the data, okay, let's debug this. So what I will do is I will just try to print something here and I just want to check if this is getting called. Not sure what is going wrong and click on send. Okay, same error, but is it printing that? No, it's not even coming inside this. So you can see it is not printing I'm um, here. That means the update method itself is not getting called. Oh, I think I got the problem. So I'm sending text. I should send JSON. Maybe that was the issue. Oh, such a simple problem. So I was thinking about something else, not looked at JSON here, it was text. And now we have solved it. So you can see we got an update says 200. And now after making the changes, I will say get products and boom. Can you see that in the second data, we only got Canon now, we don't have Canon camera. So this is working, so put we have done. The next step is to do delete. So now how delete will work. So basically for delete, we have to send a delete request and okay, question arise, how we are going to delete this. So we'll say product slash, and then we'll give an ID. So instead of sending the object to delete, we can send the ID, or product ID. So maybe 101, 102, 103. Let's say I want to work with 102 and I want to de delete this. So when I click on send, it should delete that particular object or the product from the, from the products. Okay, so now it says method not allowed. That means we have not done the mapping yet. So let's do the mapping. So here I will just create a method. So public void, or uh, maybe if you want to return something, you can do that. Or uh, you can return the status. But at this point, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So I will say delete uh, product. And here, instead of accepting an object, we have to accept the value. Uh, the same thing we have done here, right? So we are accepting a particular value. And we can do that with the help of path variable. So let's do that here. So here I can say, I want to store that in a value called product ID, but we have to use an annotation called path variable to accept the value. And then the mapping should be, okay, what do you think? What should be the mapping? The mapping is delete mapping. Uh, we have to specify the URL, which is products slash, and then we have to pass the number, right? So we have to accept that with the help of this curly brackets. And we have done that. You just have to make sure that this name is similar to this. Otherwise you have to mention in the bracket what new name you are using. Uh, since it is same, we don't have to do, do that. Okay, next, how do I delete it? I don't want to delete that from a controller. Controller will send, send a request to the service. Service will say, okay, it's my job to delete, but I don't have this method. So we'll create that method. So I will say uh, delete product, accept the product ID and delete it. But unfortunately, we don't have this method in the service. So I will click here and say, create a method in service. Now, how do you delete? So we got the product ID, but we are not sure the index number because if you want to delete from the list, which is products dot, if you say delete or if you say, okay, what's the method for deleting? Remove. So we can say remove and we have to pass the index number. Okay, but I don't have the index number. So how do we get the index number? We can use the same logic or maybe we can create a common method where you can pass the product, it will give you the ID. 
right? Or I can just use the same code multiple times. Not a good idea, okay? This is not good. I'm repeating the code. So basically, uh, I'm not following the dry principle if I'm, if I'm correct. Do not repeat yourself, I'm repeating myself. But you got the point, right? So you can basically create a method which will accept the object or the ID and it will return something. But in this case, I'm not getting the object, I'm getting the ID. So first we have to get the ID. So from this product ID, I just have to match with this. So instead of saying this, I have to say product ID. And here I can pass the index, okay? So what I'm doing is I got the product ID. I'm running a loop to check if the product ID is matching with any of the product ID. If it is matching, then remove the index. See, one of the problem I was talking about here as well is what if the ID which you are passing is not found? In that case, what it, you know what it will do? It will delete, delete the first element. Uh, technically, you should return by saying that the item not found. But at this point, I just want to keep it simple. And whatever ID I'm mentioning, I'm expecting this should, it, it is there, uh, so it will work. But again, not a good code, not a perfect code. But here we are not, we are not here to work with the logic. We are here to understand how Spring Boot works, how Spring MVC works, how the layer works. Right, logic is not that important at this point, just to keep it simple. But you got the point, I'm showing you the problems as well, you can solve it. And if you have done that, uh, let me know in the comments what solution you have used. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, I'm not sure if this works, and that's how the development life is, right? You're not sure what code will work and what will not work. So you run it and see it. So let me go to my postman. First of all, let's get all the products. You can see we got three products. And now I will send a delete request, send, no problem, we got the status code as 200. And now, let's send the get request once again to see how many data we have. We only have two. Now you can see 102 is gone. So that's how basically we achieve the cloud operations. And that's what we have done, right? So we have done with the get request initially. We have talked about the post as well. Now we have done with the put and delete. So that's how we achieve with the cloud operation using Spring Boot. So yeah, that's it from this video where we have worked with the other two methods, the put and delete. Let's see in the other upcoming videos. Bye-bye.